we're going to be inviting people to ask questions using the chat feature. And so our hope is that we'll be able to answer many of those questions at the end of our time together. Um, and anything that we're not able to talk about um, in this time together, we'll certainly get back with you directly and uh, have those conversations. So, um, and then also too, I wanted to let you know that um, each of, <clears throat> like I said, each of us are gonna be talking about our respective areas uh, both a look back at 2020 and a look ahead at 2021. And then we'll be breaking out into small groups to have some time of uh, question and answer, um, some time for reflection and prayer. Uh, just a chance to be in a little bit of a smaller group so that um, we can have more of those conversations. And it doesn't feel like you're just sitting here kind of receiving a bunch more from us. We want to definitely invite interaction and engagement from everyone in conversation. Um, also too, if you're wondering, we wrapped up our survey that went out at the last uh, kind of the end part of 2020, just asking some um, general and specific questions heading into 2021. We've been able to compile all of those numbers and we're certainly taking a look at those things and um, discussing them internally. We'll probably also be having some discussions with the church family at large as well. Um, we wanted to share some of that tonight, but we didn't feel like we had enough time to really kind of comb through the numbers as much as we wanted to or the responses as much as we wanted to. So we'll hold off on that and talk about those things um, maybe at a later date. So, um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll, we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We um, never take this time for granted, for sure, and more and more we're becoming, I think, more and more comfortable with technology, and yet it is a um, poor substitute for being together in person. And yet, God, we know that you work among all things and that you are in all places. And so we invite you especially to be a part of this conversation. We ask that your spirit be here in full and that we definitely feel your presence in and among um, this discussion that we have. And God, as we talk about these things, may we just be reminded of who you are and just how, uh, just how amazing you are um, and just the gratitude we have for you, how you continue to work in and through the hearts and that you, um, that you invite us into that partnership, God. And it's something that we are humbled by uh, to say the least. And so may we celebrate these things that we talk about. May we um, just kind of approach many of these things with open hearts and open minds and God, may we just continue to walk uh, in the way that you call us to as your church, as your, your hands and your feet. Um, God is as your humble servants, as your children. And we always look to you and to your direction in all things. And so God, we lift this time up to you and uh, we ask that you would bless it in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, we are going to start out, like I said, with the staff sharing a little bit about 2020 and 2021, kind of in their respective areas. Um, I'm going to ask Graham to go first, and then that way he can go back to the Bears-Saints game and be able to watch more of that without interruption. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead, Graham, take it away. <laughs> I resent that implication, Josh, but you might not be wrong. No. Um, Good evening, everybody. It's so good to see your faces, truly. It's a gift just to sit with you. So thank you for taking the time to be with us. As Josh mentioned, we are each just going to take two, three minutes or attempt to fit it into two, three minutes to share a little bit about what has been going on in our area and what we're looking forward to in 2021. So I have a couple of notes in front of me in order to try and meet that two to three minute criteria. I'll do my best. Um, let me talk 
first of all, just about how we pivoted a little bit in 2020. So I'm going to try and do this in three sections. One is how we pivoted our ongoing ministry activities in 2020, and then go to some of the direct response that we had to COVID in particular in 2020, and then talk a little bit about this coming year. So we have been able by and large to keep going with the ministry partnerships that we have in place and that we've been those ministries that we've been partnering with for a number of years, but we've had to, like I said, pivot a little bit um, with the the unusual circumstances that we found ourselves in. So let me give just a a couple of kind of highlight examples of that. We were for a few months in 2020, we were able to continue as normal at the hospitality house and go in there as a physical team and prepare a meal in the kitchen and serve that meal. And we were grateful to be able to do that. But there did come a point where hospitality house wasn't able to receive volunteers anymore in the building. And so we thought through just how to continue supporting them. And long story short, we've been able to continue providing a meal on the same evening every month at the hospitality house, but doing that through Farm Cafe. Um, They've partnered with a number of different churches and organizations in town to provide meals at the hospitality house in in these circumstances we find ourselves in. So we're funding that. It has the dual benefit of keeping the doors open at Farm Cafe as well. They've had similar struggles to everybody else. And so helping to support them and still being able to provide a meal at the hospitality house has been great. And obviously, we're hoping to get back to the in-person provision of that meal as as soon as we can. Um, But thank you for your ongoing support there. Similarly, we were able to do our Hope Pregnancy Center fundraiser in February, as we always do at the beginning of last year before everything went crazy. Um, We will support them again and do a fundraiser again. We're just thinking through that's that's right around the corner here. And we're just thinking through how to do that um, in in the midst of the pandemic. But we do want to support them well still. I'm going to mention them again uh, when, when I talk about 2021 a little bit. Um, And a last example, just in terms of how we pivoted, would be um, supporting Operation Christmas Child still towards the end of the year, a couple months ago. We still um, wanted to partner with them, but we did it all online. We shifted to building shoeboxes online and giving the donations online and all that good stuff. They they had a good system set up. So we're thankful to be able to continue partnering with them and the other organizations that mean a lot to us, even in a crazy year. In terms of COVID response directly, You guys, we had almost $10,000 come in for our COVID fund, which was just unbelievably generous and allowed us to do a lot of things in the community. Um, So two areas in particular. One is that we were able to donate to Blowing Rock Cares, which is a food pantry out of Rumpel Presbyterian in Blowing Rock. And they were providing food boxes for multiple distribution sites throughout the county and surrounding counties. And so we were able to donate there. And then we were one of those sites for food distributions out of our garage here at the office. And so we were able to give out over 100 boxes of food to people in need, mostly over those summer months. So a lot of that COVID fund went there, but we were also able to help a number of different families over and above the regular benevolence line that we have. We continued that too, but we were also able to help a whole lot of families who were really struggling because of COVID. And one in particular that stood out to me just as I was thinking through sharing a little bit of this was a family who um, in the community here in Watauga, they had lost both jobs. So they'd hit a really tough time financially. And then in the midst of all of that, they lost their eight month old son to sudden infant death and just being with them, being able to support them in tangible ways, sitting with that father here in the office and and just crying with him and praying with him. That was all as a direct result of that COVID fund and being able to minister to people in that way. So I was, I was really grateful for that kind of um, assistance that we were able to provide for families. So then I, I think I'm way over my two to three minutes by now, but let me just say real quickly, Goals for 2021, we're we're excited. God is at work. There's a lot that's still happening in this whole out category of our church family life. And so excited about those root causes and immediate needs that I talked about last week. If you heard that sermon um, from, from the third, check that out if you haven't heard it yet, but excited about how God's at work in that. Continue working with WCCI, the Watauga Compassionate Community Initiative. And I said last week, and I mean it with my whole heart, there's some people at the heart who are involved in that, involved in raising awareness of childhood trauma and all the effects that that has on adult life. We have some people at the heart who are involved. I want way more to be involved. And so you'll hear me talking about that a whole lot more 
um, Hope Pregnancy Center. I said I would mention them again, and that's because I'm really hoping to dig in more to their mentorship program that they have going and see if we can connect with that more deliberately and have a whole other area of partnership with Hope Pregnancy Center this year. Foster care. I just sent Josh a bunch of content and he's going to work his magic, make it beautiful and put it up on our website because we want to be a, a source of support for our foster care families. We know that there's a growing trend within our church family in terms of people who are stepping into that realm and we want to walk with you. So emergency forms for needs that come up when you get a placement, a database of resources in the community, other pieces to that. You'll, you'll see all of that coming up in the next couple of weeks on our website. And then this is the last thing I'll say, Josh, I promise. We, I'm, I'm really hoping that one way or another to establish an, an international partnership in 2021. So a lot of you know that we've been talking with Compassion International and those have been really interesting, engaging conversations and it may well end up that we continue down that path. We sort of hit pause for uh, just everything that was going on with COVID, but we'll revisit those conversations and it may well be through Compassion International or it may be that God brings another option to the table, but whatever it is, I'd really like to see us establish an international partnership in, in 2021 and, and see what God does with that. That's all I got, Josh. Back to you. <laughs> That's good. Uh, the Bears are down by 20. No, they're not. I have no idea. They're not. But, um... they're not. <laughs> No, thanks for that. Um, that's quite a bit of information. And again, if you want to ask questions now, feel free to use the chat function in our Zoom call. Otherwise, you can reach out to Graham directly if you're interested specifically in some of those out category type initiatives, such as foster care and the other partnerships that we have um, in our community and, and even around the world and stuff. So um, with that, I'm going to transfer over to Erin if she's ready and wants to share a little bit about worship and, and kind of what, um, what the year looked like and what she's looking forward to in 2021. So my, my day-to-day -day work has shifted a lot in the last year. Um, I have found myself kind of suddenly thrust into a tech role. <laughs> um, and so I have spent a lot of time, um, researching camera gear. Uh, as you know, we weren't doing that before. And a lot of people had asked about video um, pre-COVID. So this has been a, a good opportunity to learn and, and implement a new medium that, um, you know, I think it's going to carry forward in the future. We have more and more people that are connecting with us that just physically can't be with us on Sunday mornings. And so um, this has just been an opportunity to learn something new. And um, so your giving really has an, enabled us to do that, uh, to buy a camera and to learn some new software. Um, but a lot of my, my day today has been um, editing and learning and researching and typing in lyrics. And uh, so that's been, that's been different for me. Um, and so I just want to say thank you guys for your financial support that's allowed us to um, pivot. And if you're counting how many times we're going to say pivot, I realize that's that word's probably going to happen a lot. Tonight. Uh, but it, it really has been a blessing to know that we we could do that and we could make the shift to online church in that way. Um, and then I also just want to give a public thank you to this guy sitting back here, Glenn who's been um, my number one volunteer for the last year. Uh, he's pretty much single-handedly been volunteering for, for sound and setting up mics for me and editing our audio and um, entertaining our baby while I had to record worship in the other room. And so thanks so much, Glenn for all you've done, but that kind of leads me into this year. You know, I, I think we know it's time for, um, to get more people involved again. And so we are going to be like revamping some of our teams, particularly our sound team and some of our tech teams. So if you are looking for a way to get involved with church life right now, like kind of the in the service part, um, and you are interested in learning about running sound or running um, video stuff, um, or just helping with setup, please email me and let me know. We're going to be doing some sound training uh, workshops 
for anyone who is interested to learn that. So you can find my email on our website. And then um, I just also wanted to say like uh, within a worship on a deeper level, just not just the logistics. I think this season has really allowed me to wrestle with what corporate worship means when we are apart. And it's really, I think, pushed all of us past relying on just the energy of the room, um, the energy of our togetherness um, to, you know, gauge what good worship is. And I think the stripping down of it in this season has given me and and I hope you guys a opportunity to appreciate in a different way the impact of the theology of what we're singing and um you know I I know that it's harder connection wise um I know it's harder for me singing to a, a camera and I'm sure it's harder for you and I know that we're all missing that rush of oxytocin that we get when we're together in a room singing and um I wholeheartedly believe that feeling of being together is a holy thing because God wired us that way. But I I also think that this time has made me reckon with how dependent I've been on, on that feeling. And so having that piece stripped away, um, um, Dad's going to not do the dishes while I am uh, talking to you. Uh, anyway, having that piece stripped away temporarily has forced me to look uh, deeper at the words that we're singing and and kind of where I'm sourcing our our songs from and just taking a more intentional look at our at our songs. And um, so I've been trying to look intentionally towards songwriters who are a bit more on the margins and incorporate songs that. Um, teach about biblical justice and hope instead of just music that feels more widely known and is going to give us more energy in the room. And so that process, I think, has been just a really unexpected blessing for me in this season. I hope it's been for you too. Um, So I think that's all I got. I think my two to three minutes are up. So that's good. Thanks, Aaron. So I think we'll probably say pivot numerous times but i don't think we'll ever say oxytocin more than once so good for you (laughs) um i'm going to pass it over to ethan who's our next generations director and he's going to share a little bit with you hello uh i'm i'm really tempted to make us do some sort of zoom icebreaker or something where we dance and and do stuff like we do at, at uh digital youth group but yeah so uh as next generations director um with kids, youth, and the internship, we've we've all folded it differently, uh, you know, at, since March. Um, over the summer, we kind of reconstructed the internship to predominantly serve the youth. So um, normally our internship, which is our college kind of ministry arm, um, they serve in kind of an interdisciplinary capacity. Some of them have done focuses on worship. Some of them have done focuses on community uh, community events and outreach, and, and some have done youth. But uh, we talked to the team and, you know, uh, found a couple of the youth volunteers that wanted to upgrade to intern. So we uh, purposed their time for the sake of building up the youth. We thought that would be kind of the the population that under the care of the next generation's ministry that needed the most attention uh, in such disorienting seasons. And um, so we, we, we transitioned youth group to online and we'd been continuing that, you know, since it's a weekly zoom call and, and, you know, it's, it's gone up and down. Some of the kids are, are, you know, just like all of us are fatigued with, uh, with digital stuff. Um, and, and then some have joined because we're digital. So it's uh, it's, you know, it's a mixed bag. But we've uh, navigated through conversations, um, you know, we, we waded through Amos, which I believe uh, Josh is featuring for the study sessions upcoming, um, the book of Jonah, we're uh, currently doing a series on lament, uh, letting the kids, the youth know that they can, they can honestly uh, talk to God in prayer in a way that is uh, maybe raw, you know, 50 of the lament of the Psalms. It's a third, our lament psalms. So we're just trying to trying to be able to facilitate a conversation in which um, everything that they're going through at the moment is uh, seen spiritually. So that's been a fun challenge. And I, I'm so grateful for the, the youth volunteer team. Um, 
some of them have been with us for now almost three years and they're, they're just, they're just great people. And, and so we, we do some uh, development work with them on Sunday evenings and then we serve on Wednesday nights and it's just been, been really helpful uh, to, to get together and, and to be energized by a group of college students that want to love on these, these kids, even through the, the screen at the moment. So, and then the kids ministry, that was the, the puzzle piece. Uh, how do we, how do we have kids ministry with uh with digital church. And so, you know, as, as you know, we've done some, some goofy things on video, which has been really fun. Uh, but we're, we're in the middle of rebuilding, uh, the, uh, you know, kids ministry was like this ecosystem of, you know, I'm not good with kids, but I want to be involved. So they ran the check-in table or, you know, I like to hold babies or like, I don't want to hold babies. And there was just so many roles for people to get involved with. Um, I think we had like 60 kids ministry volunteers. So recreating an environment where people can volunteer is my, my modus operandi for the moment and in relation to kids, I'm, I'm hoping, uh, you know, we have a small, small team, including uh, uh, one of them's here tonight. Uh, what's up, Gloria? Good to see you. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're working on, on getting a rotation of, of more faces. And I think that's the, one of the best parts about our kids ministry is just that it's this whole ecosystem of, of volunteers and, and parental figures and sibling figures that, that love on these kids. So we're trying to recreate that a little bit through uh, diversifying our team. And as you know, all the conversations that are going to ensue about, you know, uh, as we, you know, aim towards what does uh, returning to in-person stuff, we're having those conversations within the youth ministry. We're having those conversations within, within the life of the church. And it's just, the timeline is so, um, unknown. And so, you know, just that, that's been the, the big puzzle of anxiety for both the volunteers and the youth. And, and honestly, the people who have to make those decisions, AKA us, the staff. So, um, but it's been, it's been great to be able to walk alongside these, um, these young believers and be encouraged by their faith um, as they cope with this stuff that, that you guys have been going through that you're seeing on your social media feeds uh, the, dis the disruption of life that has happened since March of, of last year. So uh, it's, it's been a, a holy and, and wonderful privilege to be able to, to walk alongside with them uh, on that. And I'm just grateful for the, yeah, as, as Aaron said, the, the, the church is still open and um, it, to, to, for you guys, uh, whether or not you directly experience youth ministry, you've been a part of it uh, through, through your prayers and support. And it means the world to me. So thank you. And um, I, I, I will, um, pivotally pivot to Josh to conclude my, my discussion. And yeah, I'm running the chat. If anybody has any questions for us, I'll be copying and pasting them and, and saving them for, for, for later. So uh, just, just let you know, if you know where that feature is, feel free to, to buzz us in any questions. I know you guys hear a lot of us talking heads at you. We want to hear some interactivity as well, but obviously it's hard to do in a, in a zoom call this big, but use that chat. We're here for you. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. And I know for me, I'm, a dad as well as a staff member. And so uh, a dad of two girls in youth group and they, they have a blast every Wednesday and it's a lot of fun to, to hear them chatting it up and everything. And they don't seem too um, worn out by, <laughs> by video at this point, they're pretty, pretty engaged. So it's, it says a lot about you and about your volunteers for sure. So thanks for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. Um, my role was kind of redefined this last year. Uh, I have been doing quite a bit of a number of things, wearing a lot of different hats. And uh, this last year, I was really able to kind of hone in on um, kind of the, the in portion of the heart. And so my title changed to connection and formation, really looking at ways that uh, we could strengthen those relationships within the heart family. And um, COVID actually gave uh, me an opportunity to maybe take a, in, an even deeper look at our small group ministry. And so we had already had uh, spiritual formation groups. They were, um, you know, operating uh, as well as can be, um, but it gave us a chance to look at it in a digital sense. And so uh, this year, it was really exciting to kind of have that new initiative where we uh, generated some new kind of renewed um, energy around uh, gathering together, even though our preferred method would be to be in living rooms around a meal, around a table. Um, this still gave us a chance and a reason to be getting together in smaller groups, maybe even more so because of the fact that we were doing 
all of our uh, Sunday gatherings online. So um, just some numbers for you in, in regards to where, where I'm focused uh, in particular. Um, I have a focus on the heart blog in particular as well. It's something that I, I kind of use as an outlet of mine. I, I love writing and, and all those kinds of things. But this year I was able to kind of bring in some other uh, writers as a part of that. So Amanda and Jerome and Catherine and Kara and myself were all able to contribute and write 31 blogs this year. And so if you have a chance, you can go back and see uh, <laughs> how things pivoted <laughs> from the, the early articles to maybe those that came along later. But um, they're really reflective, I think, in a really cool way of, of the, the season itself. And I, I think that those blogs have a, are kind of a snapshot as we were traveling through um, this last year. So if you have a chance, take a look at those. We're going to be obviously continuing that this year as well. Um, this year, too, we gained 213 YouTube subscribers. And that was from all of 18 that we had last year. So obviously, us being predominantly online, um, it made a, a reason for us to see an increase in that number. But the cool thing about that is that number is reflective of not just individuals. It could be households and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, too, it can be reflective of people who are in the high country just as much as a lot of people who are checking us out from across the country. So it's really quite cool that we have that reach. Um, let's see. We uh, Digital spiritual formation groups or spiritual formation groups, we have eight right now. And as a part of that, we were able to create what are called study sessions. And these are just very short video series um, that help kind of initiate and start conversations. And they, they're connected to digital spiritual formation groups or spiritual formation groups, but they're really available to anyone who would want to take a look at those. And so we created 12 new videos and they ranged everything from looking at our values, our distinct values as a church family, to race and reconciliation, to uh, what Advent is and the season of Advent that we just went through leading up to, to Christmas. And, and like Ethan said, we're gonna be going through the book of Amos using the videos that he created for youth group, which really are, are good for all of us to, to watch. and. Um, and as you all know, Ethan has an incredible way with video and really just an incredible um, understanding of the Bible as well. And so I'm really excited to be going through the book of Amos uh, with him as our guide. So uh, for 2021, uh, we're going to, like I said, continue with the blog. I invite anyone and everyone who feels like they have something to say to consider being a contributor to the blog. Don't let that be any kind of intimidation factor. I want to be there with you to talk through and to help share that story. So if it's a video, if it's written form, if it's a uh, crayon and paper, uh, we'll find a way to share that with people. And I really encourage you to know that you have a place where your voice it can be heard. Really, and it really can be anywhere and it really in any avenue. But if you feel like you have something that you really want to share, excuse me, with the church family at large, the blog is a great place to do that. And um, I know I'm going to be continuing. I think Amanda and Jerome are going to be helping me out um, when they can. Um, and, uh, and really, there's open opportunities for anyone and everyone. Um, another kind of call to action for for you is that we, I am looking to add five, five new spiritual formation group hosts this year. And so whether that be digital or whether that be in person, if you feel like you're comfortable with that, if it's a hybrid of the two, uh, let's talk about that and talk about what that might look like for you. And the reason that we call it hosts is that it's just simply somebody who or someone, a couple who want to come together and, and just be the facilitator, be the inviter, be the one who brings these groups together on a regular basis 
And then those study sessions can be a great opportunity for you to have all the material that you need. They come with questions, you know, all those kinds of things. So really it's just somebody who can help kind of gather small groups of people together on a regular basis. So contact me directly if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and then, like I said, we're gonna be continuing to create these study sessions. And so we're gonna be starting off with the book of Amos, but we have a lot of different ideas. We, we talked about continuing the Almond series and study session form. Uh, we talked about even uh, talking or um, discussing the effects of COVID and all the trauma that all of us have been going through and what we can learn from that and what we can learn from this season. Uh, as difficult as it has been, um, there's something that we all can can come away from it having uh, grown and, and healed, I think. So anyway, that's my pitch for you. That's my area. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Jason. He's going to share uh, w what he's been experiencing, what he's looking forward to in the, in the new year, and then move on with our, our agenda as well. Thanks, Josh. And we're about maybe 10 minutes behind what we thought. Not too bad. I'll try to go, go talk fast. Well, in the context of teaching, where we've been the past six to nine months, we, were, we finished up Deuteronomy a little early and transitioned into an extended time of, the, of one another phrases. And then from there, we went into some, some racial injustice stuff. And even though I'm in no way glad that COVID has happened, there's something in me that kind of cracked open in the midst of all this. And there's, I feel like there's a lot of revealing that has happened. I'm not so, I'm not so sure that COVID caused it as much as COVID revealed it or unveiled it. And uh, my friend, Reggie Hunt, who is the pastor of Cornerstone Summit, we've done some racial reconciliation teachings together over the years. And he made a comment that I wanted to share with you. He said that when, well, I'm kind of paraphrasing him in case he watches this later, but it, it, the sentiment was that everyone thought it was cool when we called it racial reconciliation. Not as many people were cool with it when we called it racial injustice. Because reconciliation kind of implies that, you know, we both kind of made mistakes and we need to be buddies again. Um, but when you use a word like injustice, I think it frames it in a certain way. And that was a, that was a difficult, has been a difficult thing to focus on, but much needed. And then we transitioned into this extended focus that I was calling the way of the heart, or sometimes we kind of nicknamed it the almond series. So hopefully you've seen, seen that, but I really think that us being willing to try to enter into that sacred space listening to other voices is central to who we are and is central to who we're, what we're attempting to be as a church. And so we finished up with that today, this morning, but as Josh mentioned, there are more topics and some future study sessions. I encourage you to, to maybe have conversations with people about that. Cause it's not so much a series as much as what in my heart, it was an introduction and a reminder of the kind of church that we are and the kind of church that we want to be. And what we're going to start next week is an extended focus on the Sermon on the Mount. And so here's what I'd like to ask you to do. We're going to be posting online a reading schedule. And it's going to, it's going to be for several months, but and by breaking down the Beatitudes and the full... Sermon on the Mount, you break it down over the course of months, what you find is just one sentence at a time, or maybe a few sentences of the teachings of Jesus. I think it's very timely, not that, not that we have to wait to, for a certain time to focus on the Sermon of the Mount. It's always relevant, but some of the stuff that Jesus said a couple thousand years ago on the side of that mountain is very, very relevant today. And so the reading schedule is not just a reading schedule. It's for us to separately read and meditate on these words. And I want to add the word meditate because there might be on the reading schedule, just one sentence. And instead of just saying, okay, the reading for next Sunday is this one sentence. I read the sentence, check, I did it. But to really ponder and think on and pray about and meditate on that 
one sentence or those, you know, few sentences of Jesus so that by the time there's a teaching on it on a Sunday morning, and by the time you have a conversation with someone about it, whether it be in a spiritual formation group or organically, that there's already been like, you're doing some of the work, you know, in your mind and in your heart. And so that's, I think it's really time for us to, and I said that this morning, it's time for more voices. And if more of us read and meditate and, and then we get, we come together in a small setting or a large setting or medium sized setting, we're going to learn more from each other. And so starting next Sunday will be some of those other voices. So there's some people here next Sunday, Amanda's going to teach. Then you're going to see Alex and Jimana in there. There's, uh, there's a few other faces of people here that I asked to teach. They said no. <laughs> um, and then just uh, waiting to hear back on some. But, you know, we have we have a significant, I would, I would say for the size of our church, a significant number of former pastors, former church staff, seminary grads, Bible college grads, uh, leaders and teachers, and there are even other pastors in Boone that I'm going to be inviting to, to teach us. And so for us week by week to be reading and meditating on something that Jesus said, being ready to receive and listen, but also be ready to share. You're never going to be forced to share. It's not going to be like that, but to be ready to share. I think that it's, it's very important right now for us as a church to realize that more voices are needed. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. And Kelly, there, Kelly, you see Jerome Daly. It's actually Jerome and Kelly, and she's going to be teaching here um, pretty soon. And I'm really excited to listen to more voices. And so speaking of more voices to try to do a little bit better job at catching up with our schedule, I wanted to make an announcement um, about something. It's either uh, going to seem like a huge announcement to you, or it's going to seem like kind of an obvious thing. And that is that we, after 21 years, we're going to become a non-denominational church this year. Uh, we are in the process of partnering with an organization uh, called Start Church that helps churches um, with all their kind of legal paperwork. So for some of you, this might be a weird surprise is that we are a Baptist church, the church called The Heart or Legally Shepherd's Heart Ministries about 21 years ago was started and a, a, some people from a couple Baptist churches here in Boone started it. And to be quite frank, it's pretty easy to start a Baptist church from a logistics perspective and um, there's autonomy. And, but over the years uh, our church has really become the kind of church that has a lot of different voices and perspectives and, and doctrine. And so um, among our ministry leadership team and staff alone, you see a huge spectrum of background. There's Nazarene and Church of Christ and Presbyterian and Lutheran and lots of, it just goes on and on and on of, of background. And so uh, one way to maybe just frame the, what we're doing here is that from a legal perspective, just how in terms of like, you know, the way that North Carolina would see it or United States would see it, for the last 21 years, we haven't had our own 501c3. Now, it, you still got tax credit for your donation, but it, it was we were underneath the umbrella of, of a 501c3. And so in 2021, we've already begun the process, but it takes several months. We'll have our own 501c3. And some of this is just kind of behind the scenes paperwork, because in many ways, we already kind of operate as a non-denominational church. Uh, but I think that that's the legal part of it, but I think the, maybe the more emotional part of it is that we want to really lean into our values of being the kind of church that wants to celebrate different expressions within the body of Christ. And so it's, it's kind of an interdenominational thing, if that makes any sense, uh, where it's, it's non-denominational as far as the legality, but we want to integrate lots of different um, and celebrate lots of different things. Not so much, we're not going to be, try to become every denomination and every denominational church. We, we're, we have to do all the rituals of everything, but we want to be, the, we already are, but we want to formally make it, you know, on paper. We're, we're the kind of church that really values and celebrates the fact that there's a lot of diversity in the body of Christ instead of making the differences something that separates us. And so 
uh, feel free to reach out to us either in the chat or after, after this uh, with email or whatever. Um, just if you have any questions about that. And so for some of you, you might have gone, I thought we were already non-denominational. But if, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But in 2021, we're, so we're 21 years old. So insert joke here about when you're 21 combined with being Baptist. But uh, I won't say it, but um, yeah. So that, that I think I'll pass it over to Graham now. He's going to talk a little bit about our, our uh, kind of COVID response and potential and future re re-entry plan to the high school. Thanks, man. Yeah, we we just wanted to bring you guys up to speed with where we're at uh, with this whole pandemic thing that we're in the midst of. And certainly uh, it's true just in general that we want to hear your questions, as we've said a few times, whether that's on the chat or in our breakout groups. But definitely if you have questions about COVID, we know that we're all feeling a whole host of emotions connected to this season that we have been in for months now, 10, 11 months, and, and that we will be in for a while longer here. But yeah, let me just try and bring you up to speed with our, our current thoughts and, and conversations that we've been having. So from the very beginning of this whole thing, we've made two commitments. One is that we'd really listen carefully to health professionals and healthcare professionals, both within our heart family, within the church family and outside of that as well, and really trying to be attentive to what they're telling us, understanding that they are the best source of, of information. And then also that we wanted to play our part in standing with vulnerable populations and, and how they were being affected in particular with COVID. And we said that right from the very beginning back in, in March. And so we understand that different church families and different individuals are making decisions based on what they think is right for them. But for us, because of those core commitments, we're obviously still not meeting in person on a Sunday morning. We're still moving forward with our online services. But let me tell you a little bit about kind of some of the, the nuts and bolts and, and our thought process for when we can make a bit of a, a change to that. So there's three things that we're constantly watching, especially now that vaccines have been introduced to the overall picture and we're, we're grateful for that. So we're watching those vaccination rates locally and nationally and seeing what kind of rollout is possible and, and what that means for Watauga County and for surrounding counties here. So we're watching that. We're watching the COVID cases here locally as well. That number has to start moving in the opposite direction for us to consider more of an in-person gathering. And then that state guidance in terms of the number of people for an indoor gathering. And again, for us, we it, it's our belief that state officials are trying to do their best to follow the healthcare professionals advice as well. And so we're choosing to, to stay in line with that state guidance because of where we think that's coming from. So that number would have to increase as well right now. I believe it was at 25 and it dropped down to 10. So we're looking for that to increase again. So vaccination rates increasing, the number of COVID cases decreasing, and the uh, indoor gathering number going up as well. So those are kind of the criteria, the guidelines that we're looking at. Uh, and in the meantime, we have a plan on paper for our re-entry so that we can move as quickly as possible when those guidelines seem like they're in the right place. The MLT and the staff are, are constantly talking about that and we will over these next few months as well. So when it seems like we're in the right place, we have that plan for re-entry. We know what the school's protocols are as well, the high school's protocols, so that we can, again, move quickly with that um, re-entry and that, that pivot, our favorite word, to the, the uh, in-person gathering. We long for it just like you guys long for it. Even just seeing all your faces tonight makes me long for it even more. We want that, but we want to be really wise with it as well. But we know what that plan is. We're, we're continuing to invest in that relationship with the high school, with the superintendent, the assistant principal, the principal. Those relationships matter. We're investing in them week in and week out right now so that, again, we can move as, as quickly as possible. So our great hope is that it won't be more than a few more months. I know that we're weary of this whole pandemic season and, and what it means for us in terms of not being able to, to be in person, but um, hopefully Amanda promised that it would be April. So talk to Amanda Opel if it's not April. <laughs> she did not promise. <laughs> she did not. She did not. <laughs> that is a lie. 
Um, but yeah, we, we don't know when it is, but we trust God with it. And, and again, we're, we're erring on the side of uh, what we believe is wisdom and, and what caution looks like for us. <laughs> Amanda put in the chat that Dr. Fauci told her, so he's got good sources. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully that, that clarifies a little bit guys, By by no means is it a, eh, we don't know. We'll see that that's not the posture at all. We have a lot of things in place. We know how much we want to get back together. And, and so we're, we're being as intentional as we can. Um, anything you would add to that, Jason, or does that cover it pretty well? You think? Uh, yeah, I think I would add that I have regular conversations with the superintendent of the county schools and the principal of the high school, the vice principal of the high school. They have a specific protocol. So Graham mentioned it. We have a, we have a plan in place. Whenever those three things happen, COVID numbers go down, vaccine numbers go up and maximum indoor numbers go up. Then the ministry, it, Graham said MLT, for those of you who don't know, that stands for ministry leadership team. It's kind of our elder board then the ministry leadership team can make the decision of when we would go back. So just because all three things happen, doesn't mean we'll say, we'll see you Sunday, you know, then it will be okay. What the number went up for how many are in door. Does that mean we're ready yet? Does that mean that number is enough? So, um, so we have that ongoing um, conversation and we have an active plan. I will also add before we do our breakout uh, conversations is that one of the things that we're going to be adding starting next Sunday, so this is a brand new thing. So listen, starting next Sunday, we're going to have 11 a.m. Zoom conversations for our church immediately following our mobile church. So we'll, you know, we have 10 a.m. It premieres and then 11 a.m. Jump straight from YouTube to Zoom for a conversation just to talk about it, just to process. Because remember, I'm asking you if you would read and meditate on a sentence or a few sentences of Jesus. Then during mobile church, the teaching will be about that sentence. And then at 11 o'clock, go over to Zoom and talk about it. So it's a little bit of a post church Sunday school thing, if that makes sense. So it's not separate content necessarily. It's not a little booklet to go through or a curriculum or anything like that. It's just immediately go over to have those conversations. And I'm hoping that this will grow and evolve into when we do have in-person gatherings again, that it will create a habit for us so that we will be the kind of church family that sticks around and has these conversations with each other in person later. And it might even, you know, we had a 9 a.m. and an 11 a.m. Uh, we're not planning on doing that when we re-enter. And we have some conversations and some decisions to make as far as when we will have church in person. And so one of the things we're considering, I'd love to hear from you, your opinion is when we go back in person, should it maybe be at 10? So then when it's over, we stick around in 11, have coffee or brunch or something in the cafeteria and talk about and be the kind of church family that discusses these things right after we have these gatherings. So, yeah, so look, go, go to the hearts.us this coming week and look for how you can get into that Zoom call. So next Sunday, when Amanda starts this extended focus for us. Um, if you want to jump ahead, you can just read the first, you can read Matthew five verses one and two, I think, and just be ready for not only be ready to listen to Amanda teach, but meditate on that and be ready to talk about your own thoughts on it at the zoom call. All right. I think we're going to do some breakout stuff and then we're going to kind of, and then we'll end up back here again and close. Right. You finished the dishes, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, you <he> did. <laughs> Show enough. That was oh, so good. good. Jason, I didn't mean to leave when you asked me to. <laughs> it was my fault. I was like, whoops. It was my fault. It was my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that was so great. The way we ended ours, Amanda prayed. She looked up and saw two seconds. was like, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot to look at the clock. I just opened my eyes and assumed I was late and hit the button. And anyway, sorry guys. Um, so it looks like we're a few short. Did everybody, did some people peel off? I don't know. I won't call any names. Um, if you could turn on your cameras, I just want to grab like a, like a three second recording of us saying hello to one another. And I also think it would be good for you guys to just take stock and see 
see your family, see, see your church family. So um, let's, let's just wave at each other real quick. So hi. hi. And if you, I don't mind the noise. If you guys want to unmute and just yell, John, Deborah, it won't all come through, but hi. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Hello, human that's next to Madison. Hi. There's a person next to Madison. Hi, human. Oh, hi. Love it. Hey. I want to know from Kelsey what's for dinner. Right. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. This I'm going to make it really awkward. I wasn't recording on my computer. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> oh. All right. Here we go. Hey. hey. Oh, all the way down. Even better the second time. Yeah. The old YouTube trick. Oh, no, I wasn't recording. Let's do that all over. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's fun. Take my hands off the screen. It's fine. Isn't it nice? That, when is the when is the last time you've seen so many smiles? Right. All right. <laughs> Any questions that you want to share in front of all of us? <laughs> any quick question, any questions for the whole group? Uh, we didn't get any in the chat. So just a comment, since COVID, John Campbell has been cooking me an incredible breakfast on Sunday morning. I know we'll never make it back to church on nine. So we're voting for 10 o'clock church. <laughs> Only because of breakfast. Just because of breakfast. <laughs> Sounds great. We'll come to your house for breakfast then. And you're welcome yeah. to join us. Would love you're that. welcome to join us. Uh, come on, come on. There's so many sure things like that. I am so... I want to meet, I just want to have meals in the house with people and like have plates where we all share from the same thing and reach in together and sit close to each other. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm just, whenever that, I might show up at your house too, Campbell's just, <laughs> Come on. I, I have one sermon that I may or may not, I may or may not give the sermon. It's for the unknown future when it's not just when we re-enter, but when it's truly, truly like we can hug and get close and it's the greet one another with a holy, holy kiss. Mm -hmm. First, I'm ready. I'm ready to do that. Whenever we, we're Locus. vaccinated, <laughs> get the vaccine. Yeah. We just purchased our first things... fondue set, so we're we're ready to go for anyone. Yeah. And we don't care. Yeah. Double dip all you want. <laughs> <laughs> There's Whatever probably going to be a lot of cold and flu <laughs> yeah, right. post COVID. <laughs> That or we've consumed so much hand sanitizer that we're immune to everything. Right? Wait, you consume hand sanitizer? <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're doing it wrong, John. That's what the president said, right? Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I know this is kind of, you know, I don't kind of deep, but I y'all were so focused on how we're all doing. I just wonder how... Mm -hmm. Jason and Ethan and Josh and Graham, how all of you all are kind of handling things and keeping your spirits up and keeping the church going and um, that kind of thing. If, if you want to address that, if not, we can talk about fondue. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody wants to go? <laughs> Amanda, Aaron, anybody? We're get, we're getting very little sleep at our house, and um, yeah, it's been it's been hard. It's been a, a hard year to to navigate parenthood for the first time. Yes, but we are we're surviving. We're here. Good. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's had a lot of challenges, but also. Um, just a lot of joy too to watch this guy grow up and to have had more time with him and um but yeah we're hanging in there teething you know uh, yeah. <laughs> i would say like this past year you know we're up to here with covid and now anything on top of that kind of overflows and floods out and 
I think that's what I've been feeling the most is like, it's just a kind of this constant level of feeling like you're just above water a lot of times. And yeah, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to be going through the very same thing that everyone else is going through, but then trying to find the answers or trying to share some perspective that is outside of yourself and what you're experiencing. And so it, that's been challenging. And I, I feel like it's kind of been just, you know, months of that. And, and um, it, it's a lot, but I, I also have to believe, and, and I do believe that there's something on the other side of this that will be greater than what we're experiencing now. And so that's what I just kind of cling, cling on to as much as possible. So, but I, I thank you, Rhonda, for asking that question. And, and really too, like these church family meetings, as much as they're an update of where we are and what we're doing and the things that we've accomplished, it's really just kind of a, an opportunity for us to see your faces and to be, mm-hmm. be with you. And it's a great reminder for me. It's super encouraging right now. Like I kind of walked into it like, oh boy, what, do we, what am I going to say? And coming out of it, it's just, I feel kind of a little bit lighter as a result of it. And that's just because you're here. And I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Can I interrupt with a quick question? Should be quick. Have you guys ever done this? I mean, you've obviously never done this virtually before, but have you ever done, do you normally have a big church meeting? This is our third or fourth or something, but uh, I think this past summer we had one and then several months before that we had one. not just annually. No, we, well, we have inconsistently had a quarterly so we haven't had it quarterly, but we like to pretend we do it quarterly. We just don't do it like we should. <laughs> As the dolls say, we are consistently inconsistent, which is very much the way of the heart. <laughs> or one person years ago said that we're, um, I can't remember. It was either deliberately casual or casually deliberate. I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> I'll ask a question, um, and, and obviously you can go into as much detail as, as, as you want. Uh, financially, how did the church wind up in 2020, and how are you feeling about uh, 2021? We don't have, like, full numbers, but we had a good push at the end of the year. That, that being said, we definitely still fell short. Um, fortunately, we had that um, – PPP loan, which I can't remember what that P stands for, but it's some really great, we're grateful for the loan. (laughs) And uh, I think there's a second round that we're eligible for going into 2021. So those are keeping us afloat, to be quite honest. But at the same time, we're, we also benefit from the fact that we don't carry any debt. So we have a little bit of wiggle room, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to to, you know, pay salaries and we have an office space and all of those kinds of things. So there are, there are obligations that we're still responsible for and everything, but um, it could have been a lot worse to be honest with you. And again, when we say that it's because of you, it really is. And so, you know, you, you and your, your financial support and your, your consistent generosity is, um, paying the bills for the the church, but is also keeping a staff of five people um, employed and fully employed. And, and, you know, we can't say enough about that. So it's not where we want to be, but at the same time, you know, there are a lot of churches that are closing their doors because of the financial crisis that came with COVID and we're not one of them. So we're just going to go into 2021 and believe that we can do this again and, and and hope and pray for that. So um, we'll definitely be providing a more detailed um, kind of balance sheet where we ended up 2020. We just haven't reconciled those numbers yet. Was anyone surprised that we're going to become non-denominational? Was anyone surprised that we aren't already non-denominational? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 
there were several of us on staff that didn't know that we were Baptists until we were already working here. So. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about it for years, just in case you're wondering. It's years in the making. Every every couple of years, we'd say, "Should we do this now?" And it just feels like time. Are we going to sing the benediction together? <laughs> we could. Yeah, we did last time, didn't we? Any other closing comments, questions? Feel free to reach out to us after this if something occurs to you. Yeah, I was just going to say that too, Jason. That. You know, if, if something comes to mind, either what we've shared tonight or just a, a, a thought in general, COVID or not COVID related, we, we want this to be an ongoing conversation. So don't ever hesitate to do that in whatever way works best for you guys if, if a question comes up. Seems like it might be Aaron's, uh, Aaron's closing benediction leading time. Aaron, Aaron. I can mute everybody so that it doesn't cut you out. But you, Aaron, has it, it, no, I don't want to by myself. I guess I do that a lot. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, I will let you choose whether you want to turn your mic on. Or not. There, we okay. there we go. Either way, I can hear um, Jason, so I'm in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's sing. Maybe no upon this earth. Have a great week. Bye.